Okay, we're back in the garage and continuing on the disassembly of the engine. Uh, however, we've ran out of space. So, before we start taking out these components, let's make some more space by cleaning up some of these components and moving them downstairs. Um, and we can kind of revisit uh, bringing them back up here once we start reassembling the engine. So. Let me get those out of the way and free up some more space so we can take out the pistons, the gearbox uh, components, essentially emptying out the crank cases completely. Now let's continue with this. First, we're gonna pull this portion up. Oh, that actually comes out quite easy. And put it down because I think Oh no, actually they don't seem to come off. Oh, no, they do come off. Off the end. So I'll try to keep them together for now, just because... I don't want to lose these gears. Uh, and then we have what? We have this thing here, which... is held in by... I think this might be able to come out like this. Okay, we have the bearing. Mm. Okay, if we line these up in a way, I should be able to pull out this thing. This is literally like a puzzle. <laughs> okay, so we have that. We have the bearing bottom end and this should be able to come out I think the only thing that's keeping it on there is this 10 millimeter because it's blocking it from sliding around otherwise I should be able to pull the shaft so let's take that off um, I wonder what's under here it's three bolts holding something um, okay so let's just get this off first and then we're gonna pull out the main drive shaft. Oh, not drive shaft, what is this? Uh, yeah, drive shaft. Now, uh, take it out with the pistons and the uh, connecting rods. Okay, the gear uh, gears are all out. <laughs> Naive me thought that I can just pull this out, but obviously the pistons are not designed in a way to come out from the bottom side So I actually need to disconnect the connecting rods from the crankshaft uh, And then I should be able to remove the crankshaft and then pull the pistons with the connecting rods upwards Towards the other way. So let's take off these bolts at the bottom here take off the little retainer and pull things apart Okay, and the crankshaft and cylinders um, pistons are out. So here's the crankshaft. That's actually pretty decent condition. We have the chains. Here we have the four pistons and as expected, some of them are, are in worse condition than others. For example, this one here was the last one that I took out, which was quite difficult to get out and uh, I can see that the rusting in there has been like clenching it to the um, cylinder itself and you can kind of see these are kind of in quite poor condition um, so that's that um, I'll have to figure out what I want to do with these but for now we're just gonna kind of keep them here Like so, all right, you have the crankshaft and we have this. Um, so pretty much this is fully disassembled. I don't think there's anything else. I mean, now that there's these caps here, which I'm not sure what they're guarding, because there doesn't seem to be much there. So that's all good. Uh, I might just take this little screw on here or maybe not, I'll just keep that in there. So now the goal is to use this to start reassembling the engine back. 
to a point where it's all kind of together minus most of the components on the inside. So all of these things that you see here are not gonna be in there so that the final assembly will make for something that's significantly lighter and we can actually put on the wall without worrying too much about it just ripping right out of the wall and also be a little bit easier to work with. Okay, uh, next let's move on to the bottom part and take out the gears from there. I don't think there's much more to be taken off of that part. Um, so we'll just swap them around and uh, work on that. Okay, here we have the other part of the engine, the bottom side. Uh, so yeah, pretty much we have a bunch of these uh, chain guides and tensioners uh, that we need to take off as well as the uh, final gears over here that need to be taken off. Um, as far as I can tell, you can pull out most of it this way, but then these bigger ones don't come out through that hole. So you need to kind of like slide them off one by one and then take off the entire assembly. Um, in terms of other stuff, uh, we've got some oil leaking here, uh, which is great. <laughs> Just what I wanted, that's fine. I'll get that out of the way. Uh, this shouldn't be sitting around like this for too long. So I'm just gonna take off the guards, take this off and uh, flip it back on so that we can start putting it back onto that. Okay, and the last part of the gearbox is out as well. This has been scored a little bit, I guess, from me moving things around. Um, the, in order to remove it, I had to remove four of the big gears that were on this side. Uh, and they're held in place by these like snap rings, which if you don't have uh, snap ring pliers like these ones, uh, you're not removing them. Um, and you can't just slide it all out because, well, these gears are too big to fit through this hole. So either way, that's out. Uh, now let's uh, put the top part back here and start reassembling it um, without the internals. Okay, I have the two halves back together. Uh, I've put in the internal screws, uh, bolts, sorry. In, just gotta tighten them in so that will kind of keep the two halves together. Then we're gonna put the rest of the case bolts on just so the whole thing is together. Uh, I still need to drain this and clean it um, in order to put on the bottom. Uh, so that will be probably next. And then we can flip it back upright so that we can put the cylinder heads back on, the crankcase covers on the left and the right, and the um, drive uh, gear thing um, but maybe before we do put any of the top components I'm gonna reassemble that so it's one block and then thoroughly clean it and depending on how that looks maybe just maybe I might go down the path of uh, repainting it um, doesn't really need to be super perfect but Let's see how, how it cleans up and we'll make a decision then. Okay, all the bolts that were holding the two halves together are now in place. So these are not going anywhere. Um, I am draining the oil and guck from the oil pan. Um, so that might take a little bit longer than I expected. I should probably take the bolts out of it and just flip it upside down so that all this sludge can just drain. Uh, so we can assemble the bottom and actually stand the engine up the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so far, so good though. Um, it is still quite heavy, but uh, at least I can lift it up with ease and flip it over uh, without too much trouble. So let's uh, wait for that to drain and then clean it up and put it back on here so that we can close up the bottom completely. Okay, oil pan is on. Let's flip this guy upside down. 
so we can start adding some of the other bits. Then we have the oil pan and the two halves of the engine together with the internals missing. Time to start putting the heads back on. I cleaned up some of the other stuff. Uh, as you can see, we have the pistons uh, with the connecting rods here. Uh, some of the gearing from the transmission. Um, the crankshaft. Anyway, so this is the rear two uh, cylinder head. So the ones that go on top, right here. And this one is the one that goes on the front. So in order to make sure that this thing is balanced, I'm gonna add this, these guys, this on top first, and then move on to the rest. Um, I think I'm gonna reuse the uh, gaskets for these. Um, I was debating whether or not to use them at all, given that this is not really a... Um, actually, no, I'm gonna skip it. We're just gonna add them in that way. Uh, I did wipe this down quite a bit. Uh, it's still a little dirty in a few places, but you know what, it's good enough. Uh, later on, I'll try to get it even cleaner with some solvents maybe. But uh, for now, that should do. Okay, both of the top ends are back on. As I was putting this one on, I cleaned it up a little bit. Obviously not the cleanest, but definitely a lot cleaner. And kind of as a comparison, you can see this one I haven't cleaned yet. And you can kind of see how the black on this one and the black on this one are very different. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit as well. Um, and then uh, we're gonna continue with putting on some of the back components. Uh, right now, the engine is very front heavy, so it kind of tips forward. So I'm hoping adding this guy back on will kind of counterbalance that weight on the back a little bit. Um, obviously, all the internals used to keep it upright, but now all that's gone. So we need to figure out a way to deal with that because also there is the starter motor that's gonna go back in here. So that's additional weight in the front, but uh, either way, I'll see how that goes. Let's clean this guy up and uh, start getting some of the other components. In terms of like other stuff that's left, uh, on this side we always have the crank uh, cover and the starter. Uh, on the other side we have the uh, gear um, thing for the transmission, the drive shaft and the cover on the flywheel on that side and the water pump on the bottom as well as the cold slave cylinder for the clutch we also have some of this piping that needs to go back on top but uh, yeah let's clean this up um, and maybe see how much this thing weighs now okay the transfer transmission case thing that leads to the uh, connection for the drive shaft is mounted. The slave cylinder for the clutch is mounted. The cap for the uh, transmission uh, gear position uh, sensor is on. Uh, I also put this, the tube at the top. Uh, clean that up a little bit. All in all, it's not the cleanest, but uh, as a display piece, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, so next, let's get the water pump on and the uh, pipe that connects it to the stop portion here. And then the only thing left on this side would be the flywheel cover. After that, we'll flip it over to the other side uh, to put on the crankcase cover on that side, as well as the starter on the bottom here. Also, as predicted, the weight of this piece here actually counterbalances the front of the engine. <laughs> so, actually, it's not supported here, nor is it supported here. It actually just stands by itself. So, let's get the water pump on. Okay, this side of the motor is done. Uh, we just need to put on the starter motor and the uh, crankcase cover on the other side 
And I think we're in a good state. I might put on the exhaust headers on the back two cylinders, but we'll see. Uh, let's rotate this guy, get the starter on, and then the other plate, and we'll see what we're gonna do afterwards. Okay, the starter motor is on there, and the crankcase cover is on. So the engine is pretty much fully assembled. Well, <laughs> with the exception of its interior components. Uh, so really, now what's left is figuring out how are we gonna put it on a shelf on the wall up there. Um, I more than likely will have to use one of these big wooden blocks to hold it up and a ton of anchors in some sort of fashion. I still haven't decided which side to display whether or not it's gonna be this or the other side. Um, but yeah, maybe the other side because it has a little bit more going on with silver and black parts. Um, I probably will do some more a thorough cleaning as well. Maybe grab the Dremel kit and try to polish off some of these um, metal looking components. As for the exhaust pipes or the exhaust headers, uh, here they are. Um, if I do end up mounting these on the back, because these are just for the two rear cylinders, I might just cut them off right here just so we don't have this like shitty weld on there. And I might try to polish them so we have something a little bit shinier to put on there. Uh, but uh, that's it for taking out the interior components. And in terms of weight, I think it's probably right around 80 pounds. So I think we've taken out about half the weight. Uh, so whatever I come up with in terms of anchoring it to the wall is gonna have to be very sturdy. Um, so. We'll do some research for that. All right, guys, the engine is fully reassembled. Uh, we're ready to start figuring out how we're gonna be mounting it on the wall. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available. Check me out on Instagram at balconmoto2018 and make sure to check out balconmoto.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.